NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11 on the rainy day here in Madison, but there may be light at the end of the tunnel. We'll have a look at your forecast here coming up. Plus, police have arrested a suspect in the deadly shooting of a protester during demonstrations in Charlotte over an officer's killing of a black man. And we have a special report on the age education disparity in our community. So it's another wet, little drizzly. Let's call it drizzly, okay? Uh, morning in Madison. How many is that now? I think we're heading into, what, is it day number four already? No. Yeah, oh man. Hopefully that's going to change soon. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Charlie Shortino with a look at the rain. And Charlie, what are you tracking right now? Not much. There are a few showers out there, sprinkles, areas of drizzle, but uh, nothing that is uh, going to cause too many problems at this point. Now, uh, we're going to see at least a few scattered showers at times this afternoon. Accumulation in all locations should remain under a tenth of an inch, and that is good news. Still have flood warnings in effect off to the west of here. Vernon, Crawford, Richland County under aerial flood warnings, as is the northern part of the state of Iowa. River warnings in place uh, for the Kickapoo River, Baraboo River, uh, parts of the Wisconsin River and Mississippi River included uh, in warnings as well. So there are plenty of them out there. And again, a few scattered sprinkles, drizzle, areas of showers around northerly winds, northeasterly at 12 miles per hour. Current temperature is 63. We'll run down the weekend forecast for you, which does include more rain. We'll do that coming up in about 10 minutes. Charlie, thank you. And we have learned a second person has died in Vernon County in the flooding that hit western Wisconsin. A 79-year-old Viroqua man died yesterday when he tried to drive through flood water on a road near his home. And as we reported to you yesterday, another man died after a mudslide pushed his home onto State Highway 35 near the town of Victory yesterday. Around the nation now, police have arrested a suspect in the deadly shooting of a protester during Wednesday's demonstrations in Charlotte over an officer killing a black man. He was arrested this morning. Now, the police chief today provided few other details about the suspect, but said video led investigators to that shooter. Meantime, protesters want police to release the video of Keith Smith's murder. His family says he was reading a book when he was shot by police, but police say video proves otherwise. I'm going to be very intentional about protecting the integrity of the, of the investigation, and in so doing, I'm not going to release the video. However, the police chief did say today he will show the video to Keith Scott's family, their lawyer, and the State Bureau of Investigations. Tulsa police officer Betty Shelby has been released after she was charged with manslaughter in the fatal shooting of an unarmed black man. Officer Shelby was booked at the local county jail early today and released shortly after on a $50,000 bond. The charge comes less than a week after she shot and killed 40-year-old Terrence Crutcher last Friday. Dash cam and aerial footage of the shooting showed Crutcher walking away from Officer Shelby with his arms in the air. Police have said Crutcher did not have a gun on him or in his vehicle. New information now. Investigators say alcohol appears to be a factor in a crash in which a toddler was thrown from an SUV in Dodge County. The three-year-old suffered serious injuries in the accident yesterday afternoon in the town of Ashapun, which is just outside of Watertown. The child was taken by air to a hospital. Officials say the 32-year-old Horicon woman driving the SUV lost control and the vehicle crashed into a ditch, hitting an embankment and then a pole. The driver wasn't seriously hurt. A Madison man is in custody in connection to a bank robbery Wednesday. Police say a series of surveillance clips helped them find this man, 27-year-old Blake Bradley. Bradley entered the Associated Bank on West Broadway. He kept his hand in his pocket, making it look like he might have a gun. He demanded money, then took off. Some of that stolen money has been recovered. What if your child was a runner and he or she won every race? You'd probably be very proud, right? But what would you, would you still be as proud if you found out that all the other runners had to start 10 yards behind your child? A local daycare director says that metaphor describes the education disparity in our community. NBC 15's Lauren Winfrey explains what this director is doing about it. It's something like a modern day magic school bus. Bye-bye, Miss Mary. Have a great day. We're learning starts on the road, preparing young minds for the classroom inside the playing field. They look for that bus every morning. 
but these days. It's kind of like a killjoy that they don't have that. Ruthie Carter is referring to her grandson Christopher and his friend no longer receiving early Head Start funding to ride the bus because of their age. I was very disappointed. Um, I was worried that I would have to take him out. Where would he go? A question Carter says she's contemplated, but because of transportation help from a neighbor, she doesn't need to answer right now. And I would hate to have to take him out, you know, to go to half a day. He met friends here. He's learning. Carter isn't alone in her struggle. In fact, some of the children even face homelessness. But the Playing Field Executive Director Abby Cruz says she believes in adequate child care for all. Families that are only funded with a child care subsidy can't access a high quality program. Um, there's, their co-pays are just too high. According to Cruz, about half of the children are funded through an early Head Start grant, while other families pay out of pocket. We're a school family and that in a school family, everybody has their needs met, even if those needs are different. Cruz says her mission is to provide high quality care to a mix of socioeconomically and racially diverse children through a learning model based on conscious discipline. But the task isn't always easy. You can't see a kid wake up from nap time and say, where am I gonna sleep tonight? Sorry. You can't see a kid every day ask you where he's gonna sleep at night and not be emotional, especially when you can't answer the question for him. Right now, there are 25 children enrolled at the playing field. Cruz says she expects those numbers to increase over the next few months. Her goal is to also raise enough money to purchase a van for the center so guardians like Ruthie no longer have to rely on a funded transportation stipend to get their little ones to daycare.